Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we are going to continue the assembly of this engine and today we're going to focus on the transmission and the cam chain or the uh, yeah the cam chains and the starter clutch. So all of that all of those parts and pieces are right here laid out and they go into the lower case or upper case actually you assemble everything in the upper case and then the lower case basically acts as you know the uh the cap if you will that goes over the top even though it's the bottom case you assemble everything in the upper case so anyway, all of the, uh, the starter clutch and the transmission gears and everything go inside this portion of the upper case. So I've got everything ready to go. I've got all the uh, mating surfaces cleaned up and polished up and all of that. So a couple things that I wanted to go over first are a little screen thing that we were talking about earlier and I said that it wasn't in the parts manual or the shop manual well, I was wrong it's actually shown in the section of the cam chain adjuster and the screen and the uh, the plunger and the spring and the the uh, the stud and the, the little rubber washers and so on are assembled into the cam chain adjuster here. And then it goes into the hole that I had pointed out previously, the, uh, the oil, the channel that comes up from the oil pump right there. So anyway, you'll see how that all goes together as I put this assembly together. So anyway, uh, we will get started. And the first thing that I'm going to be installing is the starter clutch. Now I've checked the starter clutch and it seems to be in good condition. The CBX starter clutch is a lot, is a lot better assembly than the F-bike ones are which are uh, pretty weak and they fail pretty regularly. So anyway, uh, this one I think is in pretty good condition. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in as is. I've checked it and it seems to be in good shape. So, so like I said, everything is cleaned up, ready to go, and I will get started. So one of the hardest things to do is to put this starter clutch in because you have to align the primary gear. There's a little notch, a little circle mark on the outside of the gear, and you have to line that, line that up 90 degrees to the case. So, in other words, it's, you know, 90 degrees straight up with the case. So you have to have that lined up 90 degrees like that. Then one thing I conveniently forgot to mention was you have to line up the T mark on the end of your crankshaft. Now as you may or may not know there is a T and an F as in Frank mark on the end of the crankshaft. So you take the T, which is top dead center, and you line that up with the engine case, just like that. Then, then you line up the notch on the starter, starter clutch shaft, and you line that up with the engine case. And then, of course, the mark on the primary gear has to be facing straight down 
lined up with the line of the engine case. So mark down lined up, notch up lined up, T mark lined up. So once all your marks are lined up, then you go ahead and put in your three bolts to secure it. And once those are secured, then you go ahead and install your starter gear. And the washer says outside on it. So you just get that as tight as you can for now until later on when the engine is a little more secure then, then we can uh, tighten that nut to spec. So then when you're done, you rotate the engine and make sure that the marks still line up. And by the way, that, that uh, lining up the marks and so on, uh, that is for the bikes that have the VIN number on or before 20,728. Now this bike is, is uh, 6,600, so it would be before and that that method that I just did applies to this bike. Now, if you have a bike that is after 20,729, then the lineup marks are different. There's uh, uh, the still the recess, and there's still, you know, on those engines after 20,000, there are index, index marks on the actual cases themselves so it's a little bit different so if you have a bike that you know has a vin beyond 20,000 then you've got to follow the uh, shop manual accordingly so now regarding the 
cam chain adjuster. So this mounts in there just like that. You adjust the camera. So it mounts in there just like that. So the way it adjusts is there's a spring load that, that pushes this forward and it pushes down on the primary chain. So what it, the way that that works is you have a plunger and a spring and then there's the cavity right there. So you put the spring in and then the plunger and basically that's your spring load. So you put those together, put a little oil on there. And then you press that inside there. And as you can see, that's where your spring load is. So getting this on here without everything falling apart is a little ginger. Now, back to our, our little screen guy. So it's got these two plastic washers that are special to this assembly. And you have one that's got a metal washer on it like that and one that is just plastic. So you put the plastic one down first, right there. Then you put your screen like that. Then you put the top portion onto the cam chain adjuster like that. But we'll do that after I get this on there. Actually, I think I can put the screen in. Well, I'll just leave it. So then that portion goes over the screen. Make sure the plunger is in there. It's a little tricky. So there's your adjuster. So this cam chain tensioner right here is really under a lot of spring tension. So when you're putting this on, it's a little difficult to kind of hold it in place and get the three bolts in place and tightened up. So uh, I've got that done now. And then a good way to check it when you've got it tied down is Take the chain with your hand like this and press up on it and see if it springs back. So then you know that the plunger inside here is working properly. So then our, uh, our little screen is in here. So there it is there. 
and you have the corresponding little plastic washer on the bottom there. And you put this one above it. And then the bottom case, when it's bolted down, will hold all that in place then. So then once you get all that tied down, then you want to kind of turn the crank, make sure it's all still moving okay. And then what I do at that point is I just squirt some oil down in there. Kind of oil up everything so that it's nice and lubricated while you're turning the engine over. So the next thing to install is the starter idle gear and that's what this assembly here is and it's got a real important what they call a wave washer and it's a washer that is kind of you know it's got kind of a wave effect to it it's very thin and it's kind of wobbly looking. So uh, you stick the gear in there like that. You really have to use a needle nose pliers. So I got it in there and it's just, it takes a few little tries, but once you get it in there, then it's in. So, so the next thing I'm going to do now is install the transmission gears. And the first thing you have to pay attention to is you have to locate your locating rings. This is the ring that I, as you recall in a previous video, when I pour, pulled the engine apart, I thought it was a broken ring, but actually it's a locating ring for the transmission gears. And those go into these slots like this. They just sit in there like that. There's one there and one here. And then if you'll notice, there's a little dowel also there's one here and one that goes here. So that's what they look like. They're just little tiny dowels and you have to make sure that those are in there. They're easy to lose. So you just kind of put that in there and it, it kind of locates the gear assembly properly. So then I go ahead and install the first set of gears.
once you have it set in place, then you rotate this around until the hole meets the dowel and then it locks in place. And then you do the same thing with the other set of gears. And again, there's the hole right there and you line it up with the dowel and then this groove right here, you line it up with the ring. Oh, one, one important thing on this set of gears is that you've got this piece here that has rubber around it and a little shaft that goes into the end of this uh, gear assembly here. So it goes in there just like that. And that's locked in place now. Then I go ahead and put some oil on them. Somebody had commented about putting a towel underneath all of this to protect the engine cases. Well, the reason that I don't do that is because of this, because invariably the surface gets oil drips on it. And it's like, like I said, when we were painting the uh, engine cases, I'm gonna repaint these cases anyway once the engine is all assembled and sealed up because it will invariably get dirty and fingerprinted and maybe some oil on there and stuff. So that's why I repaint it after it's all assembled. So you can see that turns nice and smooth and freely. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I know everybody is really anxious for each video, but uh, you know, the next step is going to be that we're going to put the lower case on. And as you saw in the previous video, the lower case is ready to go. I've got the oil pump in there. Uh, I've got the uh, assembly lube in place. 
and so on. So, uh, however, the first thing I have to do before we put that lower case on is install the rods and the rod caps. So once that's done, then we can put the lower, lower case on and then flip the engine over and it's gonna start looking like an engine again. But so today uh, we've got the entire transmission done and the starter clutch is reinstalled and the main or the primary chain tensioner is in and everything's ready to go. So on the next video, we will be installing the rods and the pistons and then the lower case. So stay tuned for that. That'll be in a, in a couple of days and then uh, it'll start looking like an engine again. So as usual, please subscribe, hit the subscribe button and then after that, hit the bell if you wanna be notified uh, via email when I post the next video. And I really appreciate uh, the subscribers because they help support the channel and uh, support me for, you know, doing future projects. And again, so please subscribe, like, share, and I welcome all comments and respond to all of them. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.